Hi everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic Jewels. So for today's deck tech and gameplay, we're going to be looking at my Jund, kind of like Ramp Aristocrats deck. So to start off with, we've got Gate Creeper Vine, so just uh, it allows us to mana fix quite early on, so for two mana. Got Rolling Thunder, so the first of our kind of like mass removal cards. So with this, you pay two red mana and X of any other mana, and we basically get to dish out that X damage, that, that X cost in damage anywhere we choose. So we can use it to either mass sweep the board, use it as a finisher all sorts of fun stuff like that just got the two copies in the deck we've got Nissa. if we're playing a ramp deck it's always nice to have her and a flip ability to either continue ramping or drawing cards got natural connection so i've got this rather than Nissa's pilgrimage just because it allows us to mana fix the red and the black mana in the deck rather than just the green read the bones is an awesome card so it allows us to scry two and then draw two cards so it's a really really powerful uh, draw mechanic uh, we've got the first of our kind of like pure sweepers, which is Radiant Flames. So it basically does X damage, where X is the number of colours of mana cost to spend it. So usually three in this deck, as we're playing a three colour deck. So pretty good for wiping away Thopters, Elves, all sorts of any kind of like small creatures, which is pretty cool. Two copies of Exquisite Firecraft to either finish burning down our opponent or to just get rid of fairly big creatures. Also good with, for dealing with Gideon as well, in case you come up across him. Erebus's Titan, so a nice powerful, uh, only 4 mana, and we get a nice 5-5, five, five, which potentially has Indestructible when uh, the opponent has no creatures on the field. And then you've also got the possibility of bringing it back as well. Not very often, but you do have the possibility of it. Woodland Wanderer, great card. So for 4 mana, we get a usually a 5-5. Five, five. So on turn 4, we can drop this, get a 5-5 five, five in play. It's also got Vigilance and Trample, which is pretty cool. Zendikar Incarnate, so a card that just gets bigger the more mana we play. From Beyond, so it gives us uh, essentially three copies of Ulamog in the deck and the ability to continue ramping by producing Eldrazi Silence every turn. Languish, so you know, Languish doesn't really need any explanation, just a mi minus four, minus four sweeper. Monvili Acid Moss, so the card everybody loves to hate. Um, basically, this card's being removed soon, so I'm going to get as much playtime in with this card as possible before it gets. Um, rotated out. I am going to put up a video about the changes to um, the Magic Jewel starter deck uh, in the next like week or so, I think, before obviously uh, Oath of the Gatewatch and Shadows of the Innistrad is released. Chandra's, Chandra's Ignition, great card. So if, say for example we've got a Woodland Wanderer on the field, we can use Chandra's Ignition it and then potentially swing for 10 damage in one turn, which is kind of crazy. Gobnixilis, so great Planeswalker, either gives us card draw or creature removal. Copter Thread, Pretty, pretty, pretty good card. Nice six-six flying body, which also uh, gives us a card draw mechanic when we kill opponents' creatures. A Coom Hellkite, so uh, another one of our uh, aristocrats. Aristocats. Aristocrats. I, oh, I keep wanting to say aristocrats. I don't know why. It's just got, got Disney on the mind. But yeah, one of our bigger, bigger, bigger creatures. So six mana, four-four, which is able to dish out damage when we drop mana. Oblivion Sir, so a great card for just putting more mana in play, and just, it's just a nice five-eight body as well. Got well, Omnath because this is just an immense card. I love Omnath. It's one of my favourite cards in the game right now. So it's landfall, which produces tokens, and then when any of either it or its to or the tokens die, we get to dish out three damage to anywhere we choose. And then finally, what kind of ramp uh, deck wouldn't be complete without Ulamog? In terms of the mana base, we've got three swamp, four mountain, five forest. Uh, we've got one smouldering marsh, two cinder glades, uh, two woodland cemeteries. Two Rootbound Crags, one Dragon Skull Summit, and four Evolving Wilds. So that's the deck. Let's go play some games. Okay, guys, here we are for game number one. So we're playing the rank 19 Olcon, I think that was, for game number one. Uh, we cannot keep that hand. Whereas this hand we can definitely keep, as we've got the Nissa and the Zendikar Incarnate. So we're going to be doing a turn one Evolving Wilds into. Oh my god, this guy is mulligan down to all hell. Yeah, he has not had a good time. This is likely to be a concede from him. Nope, he's got four cards. Okay, we've, uh, we're in a good position right away then. We're playing a four-card hand against our seven, so this could be interesting. Oh, very nice. Found Oblivion Sir as well. So, yeah, we can play Oblivion Sir on turn six after playing Nissa on turn uh, five, potentially, which is pretty cool. So yeah, we're playing uh, Olcan. Yeah, rank 19. We're down at rank 23 at the moment. I lost a few games playing this deck just because um, I was playtesting it. Wasn't really quite used to it yet. So we'll grab a red source here. Yeah, red, red, red's fine. We've got a forest and a swamp as well. 
Uh, very nice. We've managed to find natural connection, which means we don't necessarily have to nis uh, risk Nissa at any point. So we shall drop the Dragon Skull Summit, I think. Make him think we're maybe playing red black. We'll hold back the green until next turn when we can then drop the natural connection. Okay, he's played out nothing, so he's playing white, black, blue at the moment. We'll drop the Cinder Glade, which apparently. Oh, of course, I needed two basic lands to play that one untapped. Whoops a daisy, that was my mistake. Should have played Rootbound Crag instead. I could have then played out. Uh, Nis uh, not Nissa. Uh, natural connection. So, first misplay of the day is playing a Cinder Glade when I'm not supposed to. So I'll probably be dropping Zendikar and Karn at this turn instead. So he's played nothing so far. Did he get a mana? He did. He got his third mana. Good for him. We should still be ahead though. So like I said, we'll drop Rootbound Crag this turn. Drop Zendikar and Karn. We've got two natural connections to come, which is pretty cool. Got Oblivion Soul to come down in one turn's time because we can play natural connection next turn and then play it the turn afterwards. So, you know, find, find some of his mana that he's so desperately looking for. So he's managed to get to four mana now. We've got our Zendikar incarnate. And he's played Bitter Revelation, so he's looking for even more cards. So this guy's got a lot of card draw, which is probably why he could get away with going down to four cards. We should be fine though. I mean, we've, we've got Oblivion Soul to come, we've got Natural Connection to come. He didn't find any, any. well, did he already play a mana? I think he already played a mana this turn. So, uh, oh my god, we found Omnath. Fantastic. Uh, so we'll play our Natural Connection here. You know, just make sure we ramp up now. Uh, we'll get green or black. We'll get black. We got we got another green there. And Nissa will get us another green as well. So, so we're swinging for six. Like I said, we can play Oblivion So in next turn. Gets even more mana. There we go. So we've taken him down to 12 already. Because he's obviously lost two life with the Bitter Revelation. So that one is like, let's look at the top four cards of your library. So it's similar to... Um, it's similar to Read the Bones, but one mana more, and is still a sorcery, so he's got nothing so far. I feel as though we've almost got, got this match for free. Um, we can actually play Omnath this turn, which is kind of crazy, but I'd probably want to wait to play that one next turn. So we'll just swing with uh, Zendikar, Incarnate. Take him down to five, and he's going to disperse, okay. So this is going to go back to my hand. It's not the end of the world. So we obviously do no damage. And we're just going to play Oblivion Sir. Uh, yes, I would like to... Uh, I got one mana out of that. Fair enough. And then we also managed to mill a Horrible Awry, a Reeve Salt, and, and an Angelic Edict. Okay, so he has uh, actually bounced back my Oblivion Sir. He's trying to like put this off as long as possible. So he's used two Disperses now. We will be playing Omnath, though, I think, next turn. And then potentially looking at dropping maybe a Natural Connection on top of that. Then we can also then drop Oblivion so up and just keep keep going that way. So we'll drop Omnath. No, we can't play a natural connection this turn, unfortunately. Got a counter. Scatter to the winds. Yeah, so that's 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 a, that's a shame, but it's not the end of the world. It's just keeping him in the match basically at this point. So uh Like I said, we he, we've still got Zendikar and Karna and Oblivion Sower, so I'm not too bothered. Probably just use that to like mill however many cards it is again from him four cards it is because we get as any any mana that gets milled and then okay so we still bitter revelation bitter revelationing is that even a word yeah i suspected he might have had a uh, a counter with all his hand open there but nice to draw it out i mean we still got like means of uh, winning so we've got zendikar and Karna, which is a nine four oblivion so which is a five five damage creature so he's still got nothing so yeah, Oblivion So is going to come down this turn. And we've got Chandra's Ignition as well, so he's basically dead next turn. Uh, yes, we would like to use that ability, please. So we've got some of his blue mana. Very nice. Uh, we can actually play Nyssa. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll flip Nyssa. Why not? I don't think we played a mana this turn. So yeah, there we go. So we actually get to Flipper, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I always feel this one's a little bit of a uh, little bit of a cheaty, uh, cheaty win, but it's fine. Okay, so we get we get a woodland wanderer. Do we have to reveal that one? Oh yeah, I do have to reveal the top card of my library, so he knows that I've got a uh, a woodland wanderer. 
We've got a lot of mana. A lot of mana. Some of it's his, obviously. But uh, we're looking pretty good. So we got rid of his own Oblivion server. So he's just suppression and bonding my Nissa, And that's basically him dead. Because we've got Chandra's Ignition. So, uh, GG, Mr. Uh, Olkan. So yeah, we Chandra's Ignition and then just swing. It's amazing how many times I've done this with one of my five attack creatures. Just Chandra's Ignition, swing for the last five points of damage. I do like when things work in fives. Ah, let's move on to game number two. Okay, guys, here we have game number two. So we're playing the rank 27 four square. So he's just got four squares for his name. Uh, we're going to keep this hand because we've got the Gate Creeper Vine. Um, yeah, that's actually a really good opening hand. We drop Cinder Glade, then Woodland Cemetery into Gate Creeper Vine. Then we've got Turn 3 Natural Connection. We've got two Sweepers and Obnixilis. So I think we're good here. Yeah, he's, he's four squares. Four squares. So no green, so we don't really have to worry about... Okay, we'll go for the Evolving Wilds, actually. Uh, will allow us to get... Um, what's the one looking for? Like, uh, gets, gets a basic land, I think. So now, Syndicate still might have been the better... Come on. Ah, oh, there we go. Jesus Christ, that was a close one. What do I get? I'm probably going to get the Forest here, just so we can actually play out Gate Creeper Vine this turn. So we're going to drop Woodland Cemetery and Gate Creeper Vine. Just going to have to pull that uh, third mana. So we'll grab, I think, a Black Source this time. Just because Black is pretty important, especially for, like, we need it for Languish so we, and Obnixilis as well. So yeah, that was definitely a good idea to pull a second Black Source there. Okay, so he's got Sphinx's Tutelage, which is uh, could be potentially be bad. We should be okay to um, get rid of that, I think. Well, not get rid of it, but uh, beat him down before it becomes too much of a problem. So I think we'll get a, another green source or another black source or a red source. We'll get a red just because we don't have a red yet. Okay, so we've got to be careful here that we don't kind of draw too much. Especially as he's already milling us down. So we just need to get something like a Coombe Hellkite down, ASAP, uh, and then basically just go to town, dishing out damage and swinging in the air. He's got no green, so I'd have to worry about fog. So play out Cinderglade, uh, and we'll probably just play out Obnix this here. And he's gonna scatter it to the winds, okay. So at least we've got rid of that one lot of counter. So two kind of like counter decks in a row. This one's obviously involving some mill as well with the Sphinx's tutelage. I'm seeing these a lot more actually. I'm seeing a lot of mill, um, especially today when I've been playtesting a little bit before recording this episode. I've seen a fair amount of it. So we lost a natural connection and a rootbound crag, so not really the end of the world. Okay, so I'm going to play out Woodland Cemetery. I'm going to try and play out Oblivion Sower. And he's going to counter it. So... I'm assuming he's going to counter it anyway. We've still got the Akum Hellkite. Yeah, he's got a countermand, so that draws him a card. No, it does not. Do I just lose four cards there? Um, yeah, I still want to play Oblivion Sower here. And I think we'll then... What do we lose there? So what actually happened? So puts top four cards... Oh, right, I lost four more cards from the uh, from the countermand as well. And we got three mana out of it, which is a pretty good deal, actually. We'll probably we'll read the bones. We do need to kind of find... Uh, yeah, we'll find Ulamog, please. And... Maybe should have got the land there. Um, Radiant Flames isn't that useful, especially as we're not really facing that many creatures. So this could be useful. How many mana have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we should have kept the mana there. I didn't realise I was only on nine mana. I could have, in theory, have played Ulamog this turn. I don't know what he's going to play. We'll try and play out a Coombe Hellkite. Yeah, it's like my sweepers are actually like completely useless this turn. Try it. Okay, we could have played out a Lomog there, though so that's kind of annoying, but never mind. And he's going to reprise all, uh, you instead. Okay, interesting. I think we're, we're going to have to read the bones here just because we need to find, you know, something useful. Uh, yeah, we'll find, we'll keep Woodland Wanderer and we'll also keep the Swamp, I think could be useful. So we can play Olomog next turn. I am tempted to do that just to get rid of the Sphinx's Tutelage. If he plays a second one, I'm definitely playing it. I don't care if it gets countered. It's important to get rid of, like, 
a Sphinx's tutelage, basically. Okay, he's, he's found Obnixilis, so it's definitely worth playing Ulamog, because we can get rid of both Sphinx's tutelage and Ulamog this turn, which is pretty, which is awesome. So he's tapped himself out, so we know we're kind of safe from counters. We're going to lose another two cards here, but that's probably going to be the last two cards we're going to lose. And then we've, we've got Ulamog, basically, so uh, we're golden. Okay, so... One and two. Goodbye. No uh, no counter, for obvious reasons. There we go. So we've got Ulamog down. Fantastic. Ulamog in game number two. It's always nice to see you. Woodland Wanderer is a pretty premium card. Oh, okay, so he's got another Sphinx's tutelage. That should be fine. He should be dead in like two turns anyway, so... Because we're, we're going to mill him down way quicker than he can mill us down. Play out Smoldering Marsh. And then we're just going to swing. We mill him for 20. So yeah, he's... Unless he can, like, bounce Ulamog, he's basically dead next turn. So what do we get rid of, like, all sorts of... <laughs> we got rid of a uh, Suppression Bonds, which is good. And then we just play out Woodland Wanderer as well. Oh, wow, yeah. This comes down with uh, four counters on it because... Um, because we've got the blue mana from his, uh, from his deck. We get that bonus uh, extra counter on Woodland Wanderer. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Foursquare. So yeah, unless he can, like, bounce Ulamog here, he's basically dead. Coastal Discovery, so he draws two cards. I don't think he can mill me down in time, so I think... So that, yeah, he's been replaced by AI. He knows he can't get rid of Ulamog. Playing her outburst, I think that means destroy. So yeah, because this is indestructible, nothing happens. And then that's the last 20 cards of his deck gone because of Ulamog. Okay, so we're just going to attack. We actually we, we kill him in both ways because we actually mill him and we take him down to zero health, which is kind of awesome. Let's have a quick look at his deck. So what have we got? We got anything good in here? Countermans, lots of counter. Yeah, lots and lots of counter. Uh, Gideon's reproach, like destroy spells, scry. Yeah, this is basically just like a control mill deck. But yeah, we we milled him down and we destroyed him all on the same turn, which is kind of cool. So uh, let's uh, let's go for a third game. Okay guys, here we are for the final game of today's episode. I completely missed who we were playing there. They're rank 32, I know that much. Uh, we are going to keep this hand, as we've got the Zendikar Incarnate. Yeah, we're playing uh, Cyrus386, who is a rank 32. So we'll start off with the Evolving Wilds, as it is a tap land. And everything else will not be by the time we play it. Like Woodland Cemetery would be a tap land, but we obviously control uh, forests and we will be controlling a swamp after this. So we are going to pop that now. So it looks like we might be playing like maybe Agro Eldrazi, similar to the kind of deck I was playing last week. So that's going to resolve. So we're going to get ingested a little bit here. Okay, we found a second Woodland Cemetery, so we're going to play you out. We want to play a Mountain in the next two turns, so we can actually play Zendikar and Kana on turn four. So yeah, what kind of deck are we going to be playing? We've obviously got the Sludge Crawler here. I'm assuming he's going to have a Mana. Looming Spires, okay. So we've got red and red and black so far, so we've got the 2-2 Sludge Crawler coming our way. Let's go take two damage. So yeah, for, with, with this, I think basically what we're going to do is try and find a sweeper. ASAP, like Radiant Flames would be quite nice, or Languish. Yeah, Languish would work. Lost a uh, Gate Creeper Vine, which would have been useful this turn. But it's not the end of the world. Okay, that's awesome. We've got Natural Connection. So we can get Zendikar and Khan down next turn without fail. So I think we'll get that Red Source this turn. So yeah, we're only one turn away from Akum Hellkite now, so or two turns away. So next turn and then the turn after we get this down, which is awesome. Okay, yeah, we're playing Aggro Eldrazi. Look, looks like maybe red black, I'd assume. Maybe no blue in there. Let's see what he does. So we obviously can't uh, do anything about that. So we're going to go down to 14 this turn. But we will have the Zendikar Incarnate to deal with these in future. So we lose... Oh, no! That is like the clutchest of clutch ingests there. He's milled my Olamog. Now I'm sad. Now I'm angry. You've milled my Olamog. How dare you? How very dare you ingest an Olamog? How very dare you? Yeah, that is that is just that is just the epitome of all clutch ingests. Oh look, I've just ingested an Ulamog. 
So I'm guessing he's going to give that. Okay, he's going to give that the first strike. So he can pump that up by plus one, plus one. So he's going to swing with that one. I'm going to block, I think. I'm guessing he can pump it at once and he's got a fiery impulse. Okay, that's fair enough. I'd rather not have any more cards ingested, though. So he's not swung with this one. So I'm not... Oh, and it's got... Of course, it's got first strike, hasn't it? So we could really do one of our sweepers now. That doesn't really help. Um, to tell you what, we'll play out the mountain and we'll also play out a Coombe Hellkite this turn. Uh, and what we can then do is use Evolving Wilds twice. So we can kill that one with the Evolving Wilds and then also then find a mountain. Yeah, mountain will then kill the second one. So I don't mind if these two want to swing at my face for 14 because we've got a way of taking them out next turn using the Akum Hellkite. So that makes me extremely happy. So it'd be nice if I could find something like, I don't know, Reed Bones would be quite nice about now. Okay, so he's played Dust Stalker. Oh, that is annoying. At least I know I can block one of these two if he decides to swing with them. So he's going to swing with the 5-3. So we're going to skip blocking. We can kill that one though, which is not too bad. So we're going to go down to 9. Okay, so we're going to Evolving Wilds, dish out one damage to the Akum Hellkite, then pop it. Grab a mountain, and then dish out two damage to the uh, Dust Stalker. Awesome. And then we've got a second mountain to destroy the Forerunner of Slaughter next turn. So I'm going to skip blocking because we need to save, these, uh, save my Akum Hellkite as a blocker right now. At least try and put him off from swinging anyway. Yeah, that's a pretty clutch play from him. Yeah, I still can't believe he ingested my Ulamog. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're, we're, we've actually got enough mana to... Um, okay, so he's obviously dropped a Dominator Drone, did two damage to my face. Is he going to swing? If he does, I'll probably be killing the Forerunner of Slaughter. So, uh be nice if I got another uh, Evolving Wilds. Just because that way I could actually kill two of his creatures. Okay, we found a Frombion, which is nice. So we can play you out. I'm going to play a Mountain and get rid of... Um, I think the Forerunner of Slaughter. I won't be able to give anything else uh, haste that way. There we go. We will be skipping our attack. There we go. Fantastic. I'm tempted to search up for Oblivion Sower, just because it might potentially allow us to just wipe out the rest of his board. I mean, we've already lost Ulamog, so there's only one other Eldrazi we can search for with uh, From Beyond, so we may as well search for it. Grab it, might get lucky, might get a couple of his mountains and be able to dish out some damage, which would be pretty cool. See what he does, though. So From Beyond could have saved us, in the fact that we're going to get Oblivion Sower. So, unless he can kill us this turn. Okay, so we found Perilous Mir. He's obviously another colourless creature. Is he going to swing? No, he is not. So, we're going to search up our library for Oblivion, sir. There we go. So, before we play any mana... Oh, we found Evolving Wilds as well. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, yes, we would like the... Uh, so we got two damage. So what do we get? We got... Uh, we got... Do we get a mountain? Try the Dominator Drone. I think we got a mountain. Yes, we did. Excellent. And then we've got the Evolving Wilds. So we can play you. So deal a creature to deal, two, to deal one damage to. And that will be the Perilous Mirror. And then we're also going to pop you and grab. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll grab a Black Source. And we'll also kill the... Uh, Slush Crawler as well. Has he paused it? Oh, okay, so he's going to pump that up. That's fine. At least I forced him to uh, use his mana up that way. So he's going to dish out two damage to my face, but we do have the Oblivion Sower to block that next turn. So we will finally be able to swing some damage of our own. That's pretty cool. Okay. 
So what's he got left then? So the sweeper would be nice. Rolling thunder would work quite well for me right about now. Yeah, Oblivion Sword didn't do as much as I wanted it to. I mean, we got rid of two Touch of the Void, which are actually uh, pretty pretty good, because that way that would, could have potentially killed us over the next couple of turns. So uh, if he doesn't swing, that tells me he's got nothing to help him, which he does not. Oh, we've got Omnath as well. Awesome! So we can now uh, just kind of dish out damage where we please. Generate a token, so he's, he's going to find it a much harder time to, uh, come on. Why? Is he quitting? I think he might have quit because it's lagging out at this point. Yep, he's, he's quit. I was going to say, if, if that's happened, it, it implies to me that he's actually quit the game, so, uh... So that, that was that was pretty clutch. I mean, we managed to hold off the aggression, which is good. Yeah, this I do like this deck. This deck is... Uh, we might be dead here. Or has he just got a Twin Bolt because that's what the AI thinks is a good idea? Okay, so he's got a Juggernaut. Which doesn't really matter. And then he's got a Rakdos Guildgate. Yeah, I think it's just the AI going, Oh, I've got a Twin Bolt. I can just Twin Bolt his face in case I find something decent on my next card draw. Ho-ho! Oh, we found Chandra's Ignition. So... I can actually do this on a Coombe Hellkite, keeps everything else alive, because this only has four attack, and then we just swing with everything else. Awesome. Look at that. Three wins out of three. I'm, I, I, thought I'd I thought I'd lost this one at one point, but we came back, so uh, that was really good fun. This um, this Jund Aristocrat is going so, going so well. I lost like the first two or three games with this deck, but since then I've been going from strength to strength, so... Okay, so up to rank, back up to rank 26. We even get some 75 gold from that. My gold total is looking pretty good right now. We should pretty much get as close to 20,000 gold as possible before the two simultaneous uh, uh, blocks get released, which should be quite nice. So, uh, yeah, I'm leaving the episode here for now. As always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode. If you're new to the channel, it's always nice to see you hit subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.